Hello fellow Scratchers! Your cries have not gone unnoticed, and having made such great progress on our main Geometry Dash games, we can finally start adding in all those extra highly anticipated features like jump pads, jump orbs or rings as they're officially named, gravity portals and all those other game modes too. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah! So in today's episode we'll focus on the jump pads, where simply making contact sends the player flying high into the air, and jump rings, where the player has to trigger the jump by clicking the jump button. And yes, for those in the know, we will be supporting the more advanced buffer clicks, so stay tuned to learn all about that later in the episode. Now, if you appreciate a head start, feel free to pop back into my Scratch Asset project, the links under the video, where you'll find these jump pads, rings, and a few new portals, all ready to go. Just drop them into your backpack before we begin. Right here we go, open your projects from where we left off in episode 10, and before we make any changes, save them as a brand new copy for this, this is episode 11. Guys, let's get scratching! I'm going to delete the old level asset sprite to make way for the updated version from my backpack. And very exciting they look too. Do remember, if you are drawing these yourself, that each of these objects must have their own unique triggering colour. It's no mean feat, as we now have a multitude of yellow triggers. Ok, we'll begin with the humble jump pad. Copy that to your clipboard, and then move into the level sprite. Testing is always easier if we add these to the start of our levels, so duplicate the first costume, level 1-1, and paste a jump pad in there, right at the bottom. If you're not using my assets though, then this is a pretty easy shape to draw using the circle tool, which you can then modify using the shaping tool. Use the alt key to break a smooth curve and allow for this effect. The fill hue is 17 and the saturation and brightness are both full. Now don't forget the outline should never be bright white, but instead a very light yellow. Now this is important so that when we make contact with a jump pad, we don't get killed by it. Excellent! We just clipped right through, and it is looking great. So all we want to do is trigger a large jump the moment it is touched, and the size of the jump should be just over 4 blocks high, so I'm going to bring in a stack of 4 blocks so that we can measure up when we test it. Yeah, it has to be quite a bit more powerful than our standard jump height. So, make sure the level sprite is visible on the stage, so that we can see the colour of that jump pad. And then click into the player sprite. This is the easiest bit of coding we're going to have to put together. Scrolling down to the Game On scripts. And in our main game loop, we are already checking for touching portals. However, these pads want to trigger as soon as they are touched, so we'll do that even before our player movement scripts. Make a new custom block, naming it Check Transporters, and run without screen refresh. All of these pads and jump rings are transporters. Now, as I said, we'll run this before the player movement script up here, and then bring that define block down in some free space. And this is so easy that I bet a lot of you literally jumped ahead and added these without me. Go on, let me know in the comments if you did. I've seen them in the studio. If touching colour, and select that bright yellow pad, the central colour, not the edge, then if we touch that pad, we also jump. So set speed Y to 40.5. Of course, this value is subjective and will vary depending on your level and chosen block sizes, so just play around with it to find the size of jump that you want in your game. And that, my friends, is it! I told you it was easy! Smash the green flag, and here comes the pad. Whee! Oh yeah, now that was a big jump! Right over the four blocks, no problem! I can see us having a lot of fun with that one, and in Geometry Dash there are two other colours of jump pads that each have their own jump height. So after this episode is done, why not try and add those too? Yellow jump rings then! Now these are similar to jump pads, except that they need to be manually triggered to make the player jump. They look something like this. 
And yeah, the central colour is a little bit darker than the other yellow pad to ensure that it's unique. I'll keep the two shapes grouped and let's copy it and we'll bring it into the level sprite. Now you could make a new level costume or simply replace the previous one. I'll place this jump ring just above the ground so I have to jump into it from below. Now what's important is that we again do not collide with the new shape when we touch it. And also that we don't trigger the bigger jump due to the similar colour. Now make sure to make the level sprite visible on the stage again and then click into the player sprite. For starters, it's a simple matter of duplicating the same touching colour script. And then we'll change the colour for the new jump rings yellow. You see the brightness of 98? These two yellows are hopefully different enough. So the jump height of a jump ring is more or less the same as a regular jump. So let's set speed Y to 29. And the moment we touch the ring, we are bounced off the top in a nice small jump. Cool. But as I said earlier, these jump rings are only supposed to be activated by the press of the jump key. However, it's not quite that simple. Oh, because as you know, if you hold down the jump key in Geometry Dash, the player will just keep on jumping. Well, not so with a jump ring. If the jump key has already triggered a previous jump, then it will not trigger a jump ring. Oh no, we pass straight through it. A jump ring is only triggered if it is the first to be activated by that key press. This is what is referred to as a buffered click. So we are going to need to rethink our key handling on this one. Scroll up to find the define cube movement script. This is one of the places we are detecting jump key presses and mouse clicks. What I suggest we do is to take the combined checking logic and we'll drop it into the stage backdrop sprite. Okay. So here it is. Now we're going to code up a key press loop when green flag clicked. Forever. And then an if else block. And drop in your jump detecting logic in the if. Now to alert all the other scripts that a jump has been requested, we'll make a new variable. Jump key for all sprites. And yes, I always name my for all sprite variables in uppercase so that I can tell them apart. Did you notice that? Right, begin right away by setting jump key to zero. Then when the key is pressed, we don't set, but we change jump key by one. That will let us know how long the key has been held down for. Very useful. And finally, in the else branch, when the jump key is released, we set jump key back to zero once again. We can test that easily enough, and we can watch the jump key speed upwards whenever we click the mouse or press space. The count will only increase by 30 a second once the game is running, as it will be synced up with the game's frame rate. So click back into the player sprite and we'll replace this key check within the cube movement script with a greater than, checking if jump key is greater than zero. And we do the same in the ship movement script replacing the key checks with our jump key check. Now it's a good idea to run the project here and just confirm that the game controls are still working as before. Looking good? Well then we can return back down to the define check transporters script. And for starters we only want to check for jump rings when the player presses the jump key. If jump key is greater than zero. Now we should be able to pass right through the jump ring as long as the key is not held down. Yeah, but if we press the key, then we still jump. But if I hold down the jump key, then sadly I still jump twice, once on the floor and again on the jump ring, and this is wrong. The fix then is to bring in an AND block and also require that the jump key is less than 100. Now why does this help? 
Well, it doesn't until we also change jump key by 100 whenever we make a jump. That will instantly prevent any further jump ring triggers until we let go of the jump key once more. Now, of course, we must then do the same for our normal jumps. So find the cube movement script. And when we jump, we also change jump key by 100. Come on then, let's give this a go. Long hold for the jump. And it doesn't trigger the jump ring. Good. But a second press does trigger the ring. And we get our desired second jump. Brilliant. So before we finish, I just wanted to say that my choice of where to add the check transporters in our game on script may not actually be the best place. Having played around quite a bit, I think it may actually be better to do this after the player movement scripts. This makes collisions with the jump rings just that little bit more robust and predictable. So now that we have both jump pads and jump rings implemented, it's time to get creative and design some fantastic levels. I simply cannot wait to see what you guys can create with this. So don't forget to follow the link under the video and submit them to the official Scratch Studio. And yet there are still so many more things to come. Yes, next episode we'll be adding the very exciting Gravity Portals. Flipping the gravity of both the cube and the ship modes upside down. That is really going to shake things up. How cool is that? Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then please smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, checking that bell icon to ensure you get notified the moment my next video drops. But until then, thanks for watching, have a great week ahead and scratch on guys.